Hey everybody, this video is called Preparations to Build, and tonight we continue our pass-through study here in the book of 1 Kings, where we're going to be looking at Solomon's preparations to build the Lord's temple. And I just want to start out before I start reading here the text, I just want to thank everyone that's checked in and left encouraging messages and reached out in love. Um, as many of you know, it's uh, been two years now, and this is a one of the worst weeks of the year, I will literally say that. But uh, we're going to continue our study tonight in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 5. And verses 1 through 6 starts out, Now Hiram, king of Tyre, sent his servants to Solomon, because he heard that they had anointed him king in place of his father. For Hiram had always loved David. Then Solomon sent to Hiram, saying, you know how my father David could not build a house for the name of the Lord his God because of the wars which were fought against him on every side until the Lord put his foes under the soles of his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. There is neither adversary nor evil occurrence. And behold, I propose to build a house for the name of the Lord my God, as he, the Lord spoke to my father David, saying, Your son, whom I will send on your throne in your place, he shall build the house for my name. Now therefore command that they cut down cheddars of, for me from Lebanon. And my servants will be with your servants, and I will pay your wages for your servants, according to whatever you say. For you know there is none among us who has skill to cut timber like the Sidonians. So today's chapter, if you go into the book of Second Chronicles, you're going to see that it's alike with Second Chronicles chapter 2. And Tyre, as mentioned in prior study, was a very important city. It was a port type city on the Mediterranean Sea north of Israel. And Hiram, he ruled there between 978 and 944 B.C. And he had earlier provided building materials and the workers for David to build his palace back in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 11. And Solomon, he maintained friendly relations with Hiram that David had established. And they were beneficial for both groups, as you were going to see in the upcoming verses 9 through 11. And the guarantee of peace with the people surrounding Israel allowed Solomon to build this temple. And the, the setters of Lebanon symbolized majesty and might, as you find in the book of Psalm 92 verse 12 and Ezekiel 31 verse 3. And it was the best timber for building, as it did not rot and it would not cause worm infestation. And it was durable and it could be polished for fine shine. And the logs, they were tied together and they floated down the Mediterranean Sea to Joppa, where they could be transported to Jerusalem, 35 miles inland. And the Sidonians, they're the inhabitants of the city of Sidon on the Mediterranean Sea that was approximately 22 miles north of Tyre. And the term, it likely referred to the Phoenician that, that were skilled craftsmen. In verse 7 through 12 says, So it was when Hiram heard the words of Solomon that he rejoiced greatly and said, Blessed be the Lord this day, for he has given David a wise son over this great people. Then Hiram sent to Solomon, saying, I have considered the message which you have sent me, and I will do all you desire concerning the setter and cypress logs. My servants shall bring them down from Lebanon to the sea. I will float them in rafts by sea to the place you indicate to me, and will have them broken apart there. Then you can take them away, and you shall fulfill my desire by giving food for my household. Then Hiram gave Solomon setter and cypress logs according to all his desire. And Solomon gave Hiram 20,000 cores of wheat as food, for his household in twenty cores of pressed oil. Thus Solomon gave to Hiram year by year. So the Lord gave Solomon wisdom as he had promised him, 
and there was peace between Hiram and Solomon, and the two of them made a treaty together. So Hiram may have been worshiping the true God of Israel, or maybe he was just acknowledging Jehovah as the God of the Hebrews. And he recognized Solomon's wisdom in seeking to honor his father David's desires. In Tyre, it was a rocky terrain that grew great trees, but had very little food. And Hiram, we see that he asked Solomon for food for his court in exchange for his lumber. And Solomon continued in his God-given wisdom the friendly relationship that was established between Israel and Lebanon. In verse 13, 14 says, Then King Solomon raised up a labor force out of all Israel, and the labor force was 30,000 men. And he sent them to Lebanon, 10,000 a month in shifts. They were one month in Lebanon and two months at home. A Dorn Ram was in charge of the labor force. And so the 30,000 men were labored in Lebanon, where Israelites of the land. And they were sent to Lebanon, 10,000 a month in rotation. And for every month that they worked, they were off for two months, meaning that they only had to work for four months of the year. And maybe that sounds like a pretty good deal. Eight months off, you work four months a year. But you may be jealous of them for that. But, you know, we need that day of rest, which is a great thing here. And these Israelite laborers must be distinguished from the Canaanite remnant who were made into permanent slaves. And the 30,000 Israelites, they were free and they performed the task of the felon trees or also as known as removing the trees. They were tree cutters. And Adon, Adon Ram worked them via ships. In verse 15 through 18 says, Solomon had 70,000 who carried burdens and 8,000 who quarried stone in the mountains, besides 3,300 of the chiefs of Solomon's deputies who supervised the people who labored in the work. And the king commanded them to quarry large stones, costly stones, and hewn stones to lay the foundation of the temple. In verse 18 wraps up the chapter, so Solomon's builders, Haram's builders, and the Gebelites uh, queried them, and they prepared timber and stones to build the temple. And so verse 15, it describes the number of Canaanite slave laborers that Solomon used. And in Second Chronicles account, chapter 2, verse 17 through 18, has these at 150,000 laborers, and their supervisors were non-Israelite inhabitants of the land. And the Gebelites, they were inhabitants of Gebel, which was a town 60 miles north of Tyre. And Solomon, he used high quality materials even in the foundation where the stones could not be seen. So chapter five, we're going to keep it short to the point. Um, it's not maybe the most entertaining chapter for you, but it gives you a good feel of this temple that Solomon's having built for the Lord. And so we look today at Solomon's message to Haram of Tyre and vice versa. We see that Haram has a response for Solomon. And we see that the labor force of the free men, and we see that the chapter, it ends with the labor force of slaves. And that's going to wrap up this video for today. We are one quarter of the way through the book of First Kings. And the next few chapters might be a little bit shorter because it's going to be very descriptive of the temple and then also Solomon's home, his house that he builds. But we're 25% of the way through this study. And we'll see you next as we'll look at the construction of the temple. So I hope you have a great rest of your evening. God bless and we'll see you next time.